hey guys we saw last year when people came out of the exam they were well they were a little bit angry really because it was quite a lot on the paper that they didn't really expect there was quite a lot on the paper that they hadn't necessarily been taught and there are two reasons for this i'm just going to go over these reasons in this video The first reason is to do with Ofqual, the government department that tells exam boards what to do. Now I read a lot of Ofqual documents like this one here, this is the GCC subject level for combined science July 2015, it is not a thrilling read, however I do read lots of documents like this and the one for science combines, oh the one for separate science says the same sort of thing. And this is what the exam boards use when they're sorting out the specification and exam questions. And we're going to start on page four of this document. Do not worry, I'm not going to take you through the whole thing. And this is what it says here, that 40% is demonstrating knowledge. So 40% of what you do is basically taking stuff you've learnt and applying it or writing it down in the exam. And then 40% is applying and 20% is analysing. So there's lots and lots of other skills in there as opposed to just remembering stuff. No more than 15% of the total marks for the qualification should reward demanding knowledge in isolation. That is literally, what is this? and then writing down the answer. No more than 15% of the marks are gonna come from literally just remembering stuff your teacher's told you and then writing it down without any other context. And then the last bit I'm gonna show you from this relatively tiny but really, really important document is this bit here, novel situation. They have to ask you questions about novel situations that are not clearly indicated in the specification. So they have to ask you about stuff that they haven't told you about. That's because this is what Ofqual, the government, says that they have to do. Ofqual. So you may think that there aren't a load of examples in the specification, um, and that's deliberate, because the more examples that they put in the specification, the more practicals that they make you do about a specific type, the less questions they can ask you in the exam. Whereas if they give you like an example, then they've got a lot more stuff they can ask you about in the exam. You know, if they really, really limit themselves to not being able to ask you very much, then they have to make the questions really, really hard. Now, the second reason stuff comes up in the exam that, you know, you maybe haven't exactly been taught is because of the maths specification or the maths parts, which, you know, maybe you haven't been told explicitly about. I've got a list of all these things, which in the free version guide, you can go and download from my website. It's basically a list of math skills you have to be able to apply anywhere within science. Now, there are so many variabilities and so many ways that this can be done. It is impossible for your teachers to predict or teach you every single way that the math specification can apply to science specification. For example, ratio is in the math specification. And, you know, I bet your science teacher hasn't ever taught you about ratio. But ratio can be asked in a chemistry paper, it can be asked in a physics paper, it can be asked in a biology paper, in any of the units that you come across you have to be able to take what you know from maths about ratio volume percentages shapes and be able to apply it to any part of the science specification and those combinations is such a massive massive list of combinations that there is literally no way that your teachers can teach you every single one of the examples um, so that is why it happens guys, that is why stuff comes up in the exam that you haven't been taught. Sorry. 